Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Anaya from the Cure Parkinson's Trust, and I'm going to have a uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about the alpha cyanuclein seeding assay and its potential use and implications in Parkinson's research. Uh, a quick background on the assay, a big quick background on alpha cyanuclein. Uh, currently, we don't have a singular diagnostic test to confirm uh, or detect Parkinson's. Uh, often, in clinic, doctors rely on symptoms and in office tests to make a, diagnos a diagnosis. And this means that symptoms have progressed for quite a few years before they're able to make this diagnosis. So there is an urgent need for a diagnostic test. Uh, it will help early detection of the disease, but also it will help inform clinical trials in terms of recruiting participants earlier on and also identifying how disease-modifying agents are working throughout their course of time. So uh, what is alpha cyanuclein? I know a bunch of other people have already spoken about this, but let me give you a very quick background. Alpha cyanuclein is a protein. It commonly occurs in the broad body. In the brain, it makes, about, makes up about 1% of protein in neurons. Uh, while it has many functions, as I think Simon has mentioned, uh, one of its very important function is communication between neurons in the brain. Uh, just a little, again, a uh, history lesson. Uh, back in 1997, uh, alpha cyanuclein was identified as being important by some researchers who were looking into an Italian family that had 61 of 574 members who had developed Parkinson's. Uh, the researchers had found genetic variations that were within the, that were carried by family members that put them at higher risk for developing Parkinson's. The variations were in the alpha cyanuclein gene. Three months after that, scientists discovered alpha cyanuclein inside Lewy bodies, which, as we know, is a key hallmark of the Parkinson's disease brain. So if alpha cyanuclein is so important in the body, what really goes wrong, right? Uh, in what happens in the brain in within Parkinson's is that the protein misfolds and clumps together. This happens because misfolded alpha cyanuclein, some of them act as seeds that spread between cells and uh, spread between cells and lead to misfolding of other healthy alpha cyanuclein. And then these misfolded proteins further clump together, which can eventually clog up brain cells and destroy cells, such as dopaminergic neurons in the case of Parkinson's. Uh, so when we talk about, I, I know people have spoken about monomers and oligo oligomers, but my uh, what I'm trying to really drive here is that the alpha cyanuclein monomer aggregates and then it clogs up within the soma or the cell body uh, in a neuron. And which really brings us back to what is the alpha cyanuclein seeding assay. So we know that research has shown that alpha cyanuclein seeds can spread from cell to cell and then that this protein seeds at very low levels. So research have, researchers have developed a test, developed a test wherein they can amplify misfolded alpha cyanuclein. This test is called the alpha cyanuclein seed amplification assay, or as we refer to it, the alpha cyanuclein seeding assay. Uh, a background in April of 2023, researchers from the from MJFF and the PPMI initiative found that um, <coughs> we're looking at brain fluid samples from roughly a thousand participants, and they they were able to validate this assay. This assay, this particular study involved 163 healthy volunteers, 545 people with Parkinson's, 54 people with Parkinson's who had no evidence of disease in brain scans, 51 people with prodromal Parkinson's, and 310 people who had genetic risk factors for Parkinson's but not had but did not have symptoms yet. The the study found that alpha cyanuclein this assay was able to detect Parkinson's in 87% of people and also showed the lack of disease in 96% of people. Surprisingly, only 70% of, of individuals with mutations within the LARC2 gene, which was associated with Parkinson's, had an abnormal alpha synuclein, which brings us back to the topic early brought up about stratification of the disease across uh, different types of Parkinson's. And uh, the test, while can detect early abnormal Parkinson's, it is currently not available to as a diagnostic test and would need to go through validation to be used as a diagnostic test. Currently, it could possibly be used in clinical trials to recruit individuals at early, earlier stages and inform us of uh, how the disease is changing when 
those uh, drugs are being tested. So what are the what are the research implications and impact of this assay? Detecting abnormal alpha synuclein could be an effective way to detect Parkinson's years before symptoms appear. Early detection may allow for earlier treatment. And once a successful disease modifying agent is identified, we can also see how it changes over time. Uh, it's important to note that in its current, current form, the assay is pretty binary. It can tell us the presence or non-presence of uh, abnormal alpha synuclein. At the moment, we cannot determine how the condition might be changing over time. More research is needed in order, in order to do that. So uh, this assay, like I said, could be used to uh, see the effectiveness of potential treatments. For example, if a drug treatment impacts abnormal alpha synuclein over time, but again, I want to note that this, in order to undergo this type of testing, participants need to undergo a lumbar puncture to con collect samples of CSF. This is an uncomfortable procedure, so, and that could have some short-term side effects. So a quick summary, the alpha synuclein seed amplification assay detected Parkinson's 87% of time in the PPMI initiative. Uh, in volunteers who did not have Parkinson's, the test showed the absence of Parkinson's 96% uh, of time. Again, in its current form, the assay is pretty binary. It can only identify whether a person has abnormal alpha synuclein or not. More research is needed for us to be able to tell how much alpha synuclein is present or how much al abnormal alpha synuclein is present. Uh, in the future, this assay could be used to determine the effectiveness of a treatment option and a Interesting fact here is that the Predict PD study that's led by Alistair Noyce and Annette Schrag here in the UK is exploring the presence of alpha abnormal alpha synuclein through the seed amplification assay in a prodromal Parkinson's grow heart. Yeah, uh, so that's it on my end. I'm happy to take any questions if uh, anyone has any. Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, so I think the, the bit that I think is almost the most important on this slide is the fact that the current assay actually is picking up whether somebody has got abnormal alpha synuclein or not. Because if you're involving people in a clinical trial of, of a drug that might affect alpha synuclein, and you've involved a whole load of people who don't have abnormal alpha synuclein, you can imagine that your results are going to be quite messy at the end. So if we're able to use the seeding assay to make sure that we understand people's alpha synuclein status as we involve people in clinical research, it means that we can then read the results with that information in mind. And it does mean that we are able to see that if somebody has got a, a, an alpha synuclein burden and they've had a response to a treatment versus somebody who doesn't have an alpha synuclein burden and therefore hasn't responded, then we're going to have much clearer clinical trials. Because as some of you will have been very aware from listening to all of us talk over a number of years, so many clinical trials fail because we're not necessarily involving the right people in the right trials. And we also have a challenge around outcomes, but I think Martin will touch on that a little bit later on. <laughs> Question. What's it take to get from binary to where you can tell the level? Because because at the end, that would really help in the clinical trial because you can see the result. Absolutely. And there is a huge amount of work that's going on with that at the moment. We need to be able to move from a, a lumbar puncture to a blood draw, a simple blood draw that would be able to assess that. Um, and I think the other thing that um, it's really worth bearing in mind is that a lot of clinical trials are currently seeking people at that very earliest stage of, of disease. So actually given that when somebody has a symptomatic diagnosis of Parkinson's, a large number of their dopamine cells have already been affected in the brain. What we want to try and do is to be able to treat people before they become symptomatic, because imagine that would mean that we would be able to create a population of people who could live symptom free, which would be amazing, absolutely amazing. So we do need to be able to get to a blood test because putting somebody through a lumbar puncture just to ascertain but, but even to be able to say that to de to say that what level they are right now you're saying that you have an abnormal alpha but if, how far along is it absolutely and that's the bit that, that we still need to know i think we're able to pick up the burden of alpha synuclein but not the degree of that burden 
question at the back. Can you talk about early stages? Mm -hmm. Are we talking months, a year or two from diagnosis? So that's something we're going to be coming on to a little bit of time because it's a, a brilliant initiative that is evolving where we're trying to find ways of reading somebody's Parkinson's risk and then also reading into that, you know, that window so that we can create a window, a, a really early treatment window before somebody develops symptoms. Matt. Yeah, just around timelines, sort of or timing, should we say, because like the future is clearly using seeding assay as part of clinical trials. But what else has to be done or how long will it be until we start seeing it used in clinical trials? Well, I think that work is ongoing now. There are a number of initiatives that are trying to look at different ways of measuring alpha-synuclein, using alpha-synuclein as a biomarker. Um, there are some that are linked to clinical trial programs, um, which is really helpful. And there is also this conversion from the lumbar puncture to the blood test. And I think that that will be very helpful. I think <laughs> there's another really fabulous project that's going on in the UK. Um, which I have to say I find fascinating, whereby there's a lovely lady who can smell Parkinson's. Yes. And uh, this is the wonderful, wonderful Joy Mill. And what she is now being able to, to read is that conversion from the very earliest stages of Parkinson's, because she was able to pick it up in her husband 10 years before he actually developed any symptoms. And so what they're trying to use is that, that information to create a, a sequence test, which is taken as a swab for the neck and then be able to, to map that through. But there's a bit more work that needs to be done on that. But imagine how, how non-invasive that would be and also how helpful. And I can see that family history would play a role in this. Yeah. How much work is being done on that end of it to try to drive them into um, that uh, the research part of that? A lot, really a lot, particularly here in the UK, I, I, sorry, in the US, I, there are some fantastic genetic programs, particularly PD Generation, that are really collecting that information, that family history, and then also being able to help us identify how that's mapping through. So really important, really, really important. Just a quick vocabulary question. I keep seeing this word assay, which is just, I don't know if that's a British word. I've just never come across it, but it sounds like it's synonymous with study yeah. or investigation. An, uh, an assay just simply uh, is a test. It's another word for test, another word for, uh, yeah, just test. <laughs> Okay. That's what yeah. we use. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I may need a little science lesson, but I hear a lot of talk about um, proteins, but what about amino acids? Aren't those the building blocks of proteins? And yeah, are, uh, I don't understand um, the amino acid part of it. Absolutely. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So multiple amino acid <clears throat> chains come together to make proteins that are Sometimes big, sometimes small. Alpha synuclein is a monomer, which means it's a smaller protein. So are we studying those? If those are the building blocks of the protein, yeah. we're looking at the specific amino acids that are different in each protein? Or uh, we, uh, I think in this case, we are looking at the protein as a whole, not within the specific building blocks. Uh, we would be looking at alpha synuclein as a whole as a protein. Brilliant. Oh, another question. Uh, last week, I was reading about a study out of Lund University mm -hmm. uh, where they identified a biomarker, uh, dopa d carboxylase, as a both uh, a biomarker that is available in blood as well. Are you familiar with that study? And uh, I'm not. Uh, and I, is Simon still with you? Uh, yes, I'm unfortunately not familiar with that study either. Simon, would you like to jump in? <laughs> <laughs> this is when you realize that everybody's in the same room <laughs> back in the UK. Hello. Hello again. Hi. So this is a question about this, the uh, biomarker study that's just come out of Lund. Yes. Yes. No, it was quite, it's, it's quite fascinating. Um, they <coughs> looked at um, people with Lurie body dementia, I believe. And um, they saw when, when they looked at the scattering of the, um, various molecules in the um, samples um, on a log logarithmic scale, decarboxylase was way, way, way out near Pluto. It was so off the charts. So um, it looks really quite exciting as far as um, 
uh, a potential potential biomarker. What they need to do now, they they validated it ac across two independent cohorts, I believe, and um, they just want to expand that now and see if they can't do it across more international um, cohorts on a larger scale. Brilliant. I mean, I, I think biomarkers are so important for us to be able to measure change. Um, so, so all these categories are, are hugely, hugely important for you. Are there any other questions for Anaya? We are going to keep touching on this as, as the days evolve. Uh, um, but actually, any other questions or shall we move on?